Yonli. Never heard of this brand before. But it's blue. I like blue. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I am talking about an unmanaged switch. I know, the excitement is unbearable, but there is a reason why I agreed to review the switch, even though that kind of sort of backfired on me, and that is because it is an unmanaged switch that supposedly supports VLANs. Now, I know what you're thinking, if it's an unmanaged switch, how do you assign VLAN IDs and actually utilize, the... I'll get to that here in a second. So this is the Yonli 11 port gigabit power over ethernet switch. It comes with eight eight PoE ports, two uplink ports, and one SFP port. It utilizes 802.3AF slash AT power standards, has a total output power of 120 watts, and it's limited to 30 watts max per port. Now, like I said, this is an unmanaged switch, but according to their website, the Amazon website, and their own material, it supports something called an extend function, which pretty much switches it over into virtual LAN mode. In order to do that, you have a little switch on the left-hand side of the switch that actually just turns it on and off either go into VLAN mode or just the regular mode. And according to their own documentation, the switch is supposed to separate everything in their, into their own VLANs and make everything more secure. But through much testing on my end, I can't seem to get it to do anything except for keeping devices powered on. I asked them for more information. I really didn't get very much information from them. Uh, I went through all their documentation, went through all their different pictures, and I'm going to leave this section of the whole VLAN experience as a potential user error on my part. I'll tell you what I did though, in order to test it out to figure out how exactly these VLANs are supposed to work. From what I can tell from the picture, every single port is supposed to be separated. So VLANs one through eight, which to me kind of feels weird because that means there's no inter intercommunication between them. I mean, let's just say if you want to have a switch that's going to connect to uh, three different cameras and you want to NVR on the same switch and you want those all communicating with each other, but just not with the outside internet, then fine. I, I mean, there's certain different things you can do with VLANs to make yourself more secure. But in my experience, anytime I plug anything in and I flip it over to the VLAN or the extend mode, everything loses internet connection. It doesn't even have an option to have any communication at all. Even deeper, once you switch that over, the little data communication light doesn't even come on. Not even once, not, not one single blink, nothing. Just everything is cut off. I tried this with hooking up different cameras, a laptop, my main computer. I hooked it directly up to my modem to see if there was still some some kind of communication with the outside network. I tried it behind my PF Sense uh, router and tried that behind a switch on the route. I mean, I've hooked it up to all kinds of things. And once I flipped that switch, nothing has communication with anything. So as far as I could tell, where I'm gonna leave this, because I've ran a bunch of different tests on the whole VLAN thing, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to check it out, because I had an idea for a project. Once you flip that switch, all communication is cut off. Everything. It has no communication with anything else, including the outside network. And that might be exactly what they wanted it to do. It, it cuts off all communications, although I don't see the use of it, but still, it might be working as intended. I'm not really sure. What I can say, though, is that the PoE still functions. It's still supplying power to my cameras when I flip that switch. So if it was powering a camera that was utilizing maybe internet through Wi-Fi or something like that, or maybe wasn't actually going to be connected through internet, it was just going to be recording stuff locally, that camera would still be active. It still, that doesn't make sense, I guess. I mean, you could just plug in a camera and not connect it to a network. I don't know. I mean, I guess teach their own as far as usability. Maybe I'm using it wrong. I've tried all kinds of things as far as plugging it in, power cycling the switch, uh, you know, hooking up different items to it, multiple items, one item, you know, all kinds of different things. And as far as I can tell, there's zero communication, but the power is still there. So this is a dummy switch as far as being an unmanaged switch. And then once you flip that little, you know, VLAN switch, then you just, you basically have a PoE device, like an injector. You have a PoE injector. That's eight ports. But with all that said, the thing that I like about this, and I actually did test this, and it's, I mean, it's kind of a minimal test, but this does have two uplink ports. Uh, so you can plug in two different cables to help give you some better reliability. I plugged in both of them to my switch and unplugged one while doing some tests and, and plugged it back in, unplugged the other one, and it does seem really reliable. So you can have two cables connected to it if you want to little, have a little bit more you know, stability. I didn't use any kind of options to connect it to, to two different networks because I don't have two separate networks. 
uh, but just connected it all to one parent switch. It always maintained that communication, so that was good. I don't have an SFP cable, or at least not a short enough patch cable version of it, in order to connect it to my other switch via the SFP, so can't really confirm or deny whether or not that SFP port works. But either way, having the two uplinks on it is a great way to have a better reliability if for whatever reason one wire does go down. As far as the PoE and the switching capabilities go, I did plug in all of my cameras, plus one I'm not using, and powered it for, I think, about 24 hours. And that was basically just having one uplink connected to my switch, plugging in the rest of my cameras into it and a camera that I wasn't using, let it run for 24 hours, it powered everything as it was supposed to. I didn't have any downtime. I didn't have any unnoticeable disconnections. So as far as I could tell, it was super reliable. I didn't fill up all of the ports with PoE cameras because I only have six to plug into it, but still working as intended. And from my standpoint, it's like, you know, you plug it in, it works. Now what? You know, I guess hashtag good. From a switching standpoint, again, you plug it in, you run it, it works. Hashtag good. Basically, I was able to get near gigabit speed communication between my laptop and my main computer. Uh, I was also able to get near gigabit communication between the speed test servers because I do have a gigabit incoming connection to the house. So as far as I can tell, it works as intended, works as fast as it's supposed to be, and I don't really see any problems with it. And because it's unmanaged or a dummy switch, Super easy, easy to use. You know, you don't have to log in, configure anything. You don't have to do anything. You just plug it into your network and you're good to go. So from a PoE sense, it's got eight usable ports to power cameras. They all work. They work at the speeds they're supposed to. And you have two uplink connections to give you good network reliability if for whatever reason you end up running into an issue with one of your cables at any point in time. But from a review standpoint, it works. It's probably not the cheapest, switch out there, but it is fairly affordable. So it's reliable, it works, but it's got this little internet kill switch here that like cuts off all communication that I seem to think it's completely worthless, but I'm just going to assume I don't understand it. I asked for more documentation. I've even asked for some other people that I know for some help, and I still kind of got left with a little bit of more questions than answers. But before I'm gonna wrap up this video, let's talk about mounting options. Now, as you can see, this is a fairly small device. So if you wanna set it somewhere on whatever on its legs, you have the option to hook up rubber legs. So that way it won't slide around or otherwise just be metal on you know, your desk or something like that. That is one option, but they also give you wings that you can attach to the side like so. And this will give you the standard, what is it? 18 and a half to 19 inches that'll fit in standard racks. So if you wanna hook it right up next to a blade server or something like that, you can. And it comes with It comes with six of these little screws, so you could, you know, screw it in. So if you want to rack it, you can. If you don't want to rack it, you can put rubber feet on it and you can set it on something if you need to. Overall, like it does have a maximum of 120 watts. So that's basically, if you're gonna use every port, that's a maximum of what, 15 watts per port. Uh, so if you have some cameras, they're probably gonna be running five to 10 watts each. You should be good to go to run eight full IP cameras. And since it's an unmanaged switch, there's really not much more to dive into because I've ran it, ran it for a few days. Everything seems to work fine. I spent most of my time testing this whole VLAN thing, trying to figure out beyond the documentation what it's supposed to do. Uh, since there's really not much documentation, there wasn't really you know, a uh, lot to go off of, but I try to figure out if there was any major benefit to the whole VLAN extend support system mode thing that this has. And as far as I can tell, it's completely and utterly pointless. So if anyone out there has used any anything like this, this, this brand with this whole extend feature that they have, please let me know in the comments. I'll even pin it to the top because uh, I tried, can't really figure out anything about it beyond you flip the switch and everything loses internet connection completely. There's no communication between each device, which according to their own photos, that's the way it's supposed to be, but there's also no outside network communication. So I don't know, it's kind of weird, I guess. But hey, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, always post them down below. If you wanna know more information about this switch, I will, of course, link it in the description down below. So thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a good day. Whether you're protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi, bypassing regional filters, or just simply wanting to download something without the worries of a government or a corporation not liking you for it, a VPN service is a must-have solution. And depending on where you're located, it could be hard to find a VPN fast enough for daily use. 
That's why the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee of NordVPN is so valuable. Because even though I can tell you I get great speeds and reliability, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. By visiting nordvpn.com slash byte or clicking the link in the video description below, you can test these speeds out for yourself with a heavy discount. And with 30 days to prove it's worth, it's a safe way to ensure you're getting what you paid for.